So in this video, we're going to explore the job enhancements that Sabre has made just over time as we've been dealing with engineer to order or project based companies, they said jobs are great, but it would be even better if it could do this, or it would be even better if it could do that. Over time, we've also noticed gaps that we found in the system, which is basically what led us to creating the Sabre ETO add on. So this is meant to be an introductory video just to show you guys some of the additions we've made to the job card, to the task area, and to the bond planning line. This will be introductory and then what you can do is watch the additional videos that will show you with a little bit more detail how you would use those enhanced features. So again, just to highlight that we're talking about jobs. So typically people use jobs versus a sales order because they, they have a project or they have something that they need to collect various costs surrounding but it isn't predefined. So a sales order is more for something where you have an inventory item, you take it off the shelf or you make it and then you ship it to a customer. It's got a discrete item associated to it and it's really just an item that you have. The job allows you to be able to create tasks which allow you to set milestones and create different cost centers for analysis and for management views. And then you have the ability within that under the planning lines to be able to associate GL expenses that you want to associate to this project, resource time that you want to allocate, items that you want to allocate. You can even just indicate text lines or information about the, the job and different functions that had to, to be done. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how you access the job card and then the Sabre ETO and the user defined fields that we have added. So within the application here, let's take a look. First things first, where do we set up those user defined fields that are shown on a job? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into what's called company information, set up Sabre user fields, and you can see down here that I had the ability to set up 10 extra fields on a job card. I could set up user defined fields on a job task and I can set up user defined fields on the job planning line. So from a job perspective, I created a new field, so I gave it a caption. I indicated which type of field I wanted it to be. I activated that field. I indicated whether or not I wanted users to edit or change the field that information that was there. Depending on the type of field, I can indicate that is an option. And under the user field options, I can set what those options should be. So again, in additional videos, we will show you a little bit more detail on how to create those user defined fields. But ultimately here, we wanted to be able to see that from the company information and through updating some information here on the line, that's how you would set up those user defined fields. And then if we close out of here and we go into our job, Sabre's created a new fast tab, so it's very clear to identify which are the user defined fields that you created. And if I scroll down, I can see here Sabre user fields. I can see that these are the three new fields that I've activated and captioned and indicated what kind of information I want shown there. You'll see that even though I'm, I still have additional user defined fields that I could turn on at a later date, I do not see them. So I'm not going to see a bunch of additional fields that I'm not using. The system's only going to show me the fields that I've activated. And again, you know, if I've got certain defined criteria that I want to make sure that it's a date field or make sure that it's a specific option field, the system will respect that. The next area that we're going to explore is the Sabre ETO Fast Tab. So again, we've given a specific new fast tab that allows you to be able to see that this is additional fields that have been added by us. They're not native to the jobs module within Business Central. We've given the ability to be able to indicate additional key people like a project manager, or people responsible for a job. We've uh, added the ability to be able to indicate ship to information or sell to information, which natively is missing. It gives only the ability to add a bill to. We've added the ability to indicate such details as a customer PO number, as an example as well. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the application. So again, I'm on a job card here, and you can see down here we've got the Sabre ETO. So the customer PO number, here is where you can indicate the purchase order number that they've given you if this job is in fact an order. 
We have the default cell to. So this gives the ability to be able to indicate an address information or a customer that is different than the bill to information, which is set up in the general section of a job, and that's what's used for invoicing. Default location code. So this gives us the ability to be able to identify which location code should default to the planning lines as we start to add them. So natively in the past, when you created bond planning lines or job planning lines within your bill of material, you always had to indicate a location code. And if you've set up that your location is mandatory, this became a little bit of a pain for customers. Last date modified. So if you want to be able to indicate a unique date that's user defined by you on when certain information was updated on the job card, you can do that. Here we've indicated the engineer. So if we drop down, you'll be able to see that this is a lookup to your resource table. So you can set engineers up as resources within your company. And then as you do so, the engineer name populates if you select an engineer in the field above. Opportunity number. So we've enhanced the relationship management module so that you would have the ability to create a job from an opportunity. And if you do so, you can associate the two. So I would always know that this job was created because of a certain opportunity in my system. Here I have a ship to code. And so when I drop down the list here, I can see a list of ship to information that is associated to that customer card. And then as I select a specific ship to, or if I change a specific ship to, the ship to name and all of the related address information will update as well. So again, that was missing, so we just gave that additional feature and functionality. So for paperwork and things like that that goes out, we have a little bit more information surrounding who's going to be paying, who bought it, where we need to ship it to, etc. So now we're going to look at the job task updates. So we've added things like a bomb task boolean, the ability to see a forecast amount, and the ability to see the budget versus actual resource hours. So here we can see that we've added these new columns. And of course, as always, we're going to jump into the application to see that as well. So as you can see here in the task area, we have added these new columns. So the bomb task is a very important field to be aware of, certainly when you first subscribe to Saber ETO and you are looking forward to these new features and you find that you can't access them. So you'll notice that what we've done is we've left the job planning lines as they are. So that's native functionality. That's where you would do your invoicing from. But the bomb planning lines are a new page that we created that have all the additional features that we have put into Saber ETO. So the ability to disposition, the ability to see purchase information, see how we've dispositioned the line, indicate that a designer is ready to have a planner take it on, all of that information is on a BOM planning line. If you do not have this task enabled, so I'm going to highlight a line here where BOM task is not enabled. I can see here that I'm receiving an error that says the selected line is not a BOM task line. So I can't go into that BOM planning line and use all that additional functionality. So that would be quickly solved by just enabling the Boolean. So I could click there, just enable that as a bomb task, under manage bomb planning lines. Now my page launches, I can see the additional features. I can see plan ready, disposition status. Um, if I scroll over, things like quantity on hand, this purchase information. So all of those additional columns have been added to this bomb planning line. So bomb task, again, a really important one, certainly an important one if you find that you can't access the page. The second one is the ability to indicate a forecast amount. So on a bomb planning line, we have given you the ability to be able to indicate an initial forecast. So what we had found over time was that when the project started, there was an initial forecast or a budget that was sort of getting lost as we started adding planning lines and as more and more lines started being added for items and resources and things like that. So we've given the ability, so you would create 
you know, maybe an item called estimate. You can call it whatever you like. You can call it forecast. So the idea being that you would add this item to your initial line. I've indicated a quantity of one. And if I keep scrolling over, I have marked this line as a forecast line. So this is a new feature of Sabre ETO. And I have indicated the forecast amount. So what this does is it allows me to always keep that original tracking of the original budget that I should be working for for this specific task. So obviously we are able to see that when we drill into the bond planning line, but again, we've added the ability to indicate the total forecast amount during our uh, task level look as well. So actual resource hours and budget resource hours. So what this does is it takes a look at what we have budgeted for this planning line. So if I drill into this, I am able to see resource type lines that are marked as budget. And then of course, if those resources have unit costs and quantities available, I have the ability to be able to see based on the quantity, how many hours are budgeted for that specific task. As I start you know, proving my timesheets or posting ledger entries in relation to time, I would also be able to see actual resource hours. So again, I always have that visibility to be able to see, well, what did I budget for hours in terms of my resources and how am I actually doing? And again, that's a very nice visual indicator for the people that are managing so that they can keep an eye on that and look at, make sure it's not creeping up too high. So last but not least, we're going to talk about job planning line updates. So we've added the ability to support looking at, do we have purchase quotes? Do we have purchase orders? Have those purchase orders been received? So there's lots of fields that support that. Uh, new fields to support shipping. So previously within Native Business Central, you were not able to create packing slips or ship planning lines. We've added that functionality. New fields to support inventory control, so the ability, as an example, to see the quantity on hand. Ultimately, there's just so many new fields. If we take a look at the application, we're going to be able to see a lot of new features and new fields that weren't, weren't there originally. So again, I'm going to take a look at my job card. I'm going to highlight a line here. I'm going to go into my bond planning lines. So some of the new fields here, plan ready. So plan ready is basically the sign off piece or the sign off uh, tool that a designer would use to be able to say, this line is good to go. I've confirmed the item. I've confirmed the quantity. I've confirmed the date. Please go ahead now and start figuring out how we're going to meet this demand. So plan ready is the handoff tool from the designer to the planner. Disposition status. So this gives me the ability so that anybody looking at these bond planning lines can know how we intend to meet this demand. Any lines without a disposition status obviously haven't been dealt with yet. Purchase means that there's a purchase order or we intend to purchase it. If it's green, that means it's been fully received, but it's been fully received off of a purchase order. Stock means that we're going to use the relief from inventory function. So it means that we've allocated a quantity on hand to this job. We might also see RFQ, which means that there's a request for quote out. We might also see build, which means that we're going to do a production to satisfy the demand of this line. So you'll also notice here on the job planning lines that we have the ability to see some color coding. So black lines mean that the item's ready to purchase. So it's available for purchasing or dispositioning. We'll see sometimes blue lines. So I don't have any blue lines here, but what blue means is that the line has been purchased or a production order, assembly order have been created. And the due date of those supply orders is before the planning date. So I'm not late yet. Yellow means that I've purchased or I've created an assembly or a job order, but the plan and the planning date is later than my current date. And my expected receipt date or my due date of that is after the planning date. So keep in mind that this planning date is what the system is looking at for its color coding to be able to say, okay, based on this demand line, what's the date that is on the supply order? 
So for example, as we see here, this first line here is red, and that's because the line is late. So the current date falls after the planning date, we're in trouble, we need to deal with those. Green is anything that's been received or taken from stock or that the planning line is dealt with. So it means that there's no more I need to do on that line. I may have purchased it, it's fully received. I may decide that I'm gonna take it from stock. And in some cases too, you may see a gray line. And gray lines are because based on the role or the permission sets that I have, I can't purchase that line just yet. So if we scroll over, Again, we'll just see a bunch of additional fields that have been added. So the ability to associate a vendor number, a vendor name, the ability to be able to see what quantity we have on hand, the ability to see if we've created purchase quotes in the past or currently for this specific line. If there's a purchase order that's linked to this line, we're able to see that. What the line number is, we can see the status of the purchase order that's linked. We have the ability to see the purchase order date, when it's expected to be received, what the order quantity was. If it's been received, we have the ability to see what the receipt date was linked to that purchase order. We have the ability to see what's been received. We have the ability to be able to see the quantity to ship, the quantity in queue and the quantity shipped. And again, we'll get into more detail in our packing slip videos. We have the forecast line and the forecast amount, which we discussed earlier in the job tasks. We have the ability to see the build order number, the build order line number, the build order status. So again, that's the ability if we've created the, using the build function, either a production order or an assembly order, we can see the related entries that have been created for that. We can indicate material budgets or labor budgets that we can then show on the job task line as well. We can indicate who it was requested by. You can indicate a markup. So if I wanted to mark up my planning lines, then I can see the effect on the unit price based on that markup. And again, in the job setup is where you can indicate does this 25 is it based on a percentage or is it just based on a value? And here we can see these are some user defined fields that have been added to the job planning lines based on the user defined field setup that we had shown previously. So as mentioned, there's lots of videos that dive a little bit deeper into these features. If you have any questions once you've watched those videos, please never hesitate to reach out to us here at Saver.